Uh, this distinguished gentleman next to me here at the PRI show is Mr. Howden Ganley. And if you know anything about Formula One racing and its history, he's got a long storied history. One of Bruce McLaren's mates. I said the, I said the trio, you said the four. Who, who, who were the four horsemen? There are four Kiwis who scored points in the World Championship. That's uh, Bruce McLaren, Chris Amon, Denny Holm and me. And there are four Kiwis who were on the podium in the old Can-Am, the seven liter. And that's the same four guys. <laughs> and there are four Kiwis have been on the podium at Le Mans 24 hours. It's the same four Kiwis. <laughs> How uh, I first met you at Indianapolis and then we've been acquainted since then through the PR show but you have one of the great stories of all time because you were one of Bruce McLaren's first employees and you helped him build his first Formula One car and then you told me the greatest story of all. Well, I said, I said, weren't you kind of old when you made your Formula One debut? You had no, did you, were you racing when you were a mechanic before you turned 29 when you debuted, or how did you get your start? Well, I started racing in New Zealand. I raced uh, Lotus 11 for two years, and I crashed it, lost all my money. Uh, I had just enough money to get to England. I eventually finished up as a mechanic at McLaren's. Uh, yeah, I was employee number three after Tyler and Wall, and uh, then worked on the first ever McLaren, which is a sports car, then the first uh, Formula One car. I was at Monaco for McLaren's first ever Grand Prix and then uh, saved enough money or came, or came to America, worked for Peter Revson on Can-Am, saved up the money, bought a Formula 3 car <laughs> and uh, then I went well enough that Bruce phoned me up one day and said, come to Goodwood for a Formula 1 test and at the end of that test he said, I'm going to put you in Formula 1 and I'm going to put you into the works 5,000 car for a season to get you there and away it went. How awesome. So your, your, your debut was predicated on the fact that you had a good test and you impressed Bruce McLaren. Yeah, uh, very lucky break. Uh, I just rode my way to the top of Formula 3 and uh, he was impressed enough with that and you know, then the Formula 1 thing, um, as I said, led into the 5,000 but Bruce unfortunately was killed in that season uh, but I'd done enough that uh, BRM then picked me up for the following year and they put me into Formula 1 and I stayed with them two years and then I went to Frank Williams and <laughs> I drove for Matra at Le Mans and uh, Golf and sports cars. So. And the great thing is it's all in this book that's going to be published here pretty quick. The ro now why is it named The Road to Monaco? Because you were just because that was your the one race that you always wanted to run? Well uh, I was going to call it just a simple country boy and my <laughs> wife said there's no way you're going to call it that <laughs> and I didn't know what to do but my old friend Ian Young and Michael Clark they said The Road to Monaco look you went there as a mechanic then you went back driving and then last year you went up to the palace to have a little chinky chinks with their serene highnesses so <laughs> the road to monaco <laughs> i just think these are the stories that don't happen anymore guys don't start out as mechanics and end up formula one drivers those things don't happen and i think that's what's going to be cool about reading this whole book well yeah but bruce mclaren was the catalyst uh, you, you you knew him didn't you and he was just the most wonderful wonderful guy and he would help other Kiwis. Without him, I would not have got there. Now, what about our boy Scott Dixon? Do you keep track of him? You guys flew here the other day from, from Auckland, but have, are you impressed with this kid? I mean, he I tell you, he's probably one of the best guys we've seen in the last 25 years. Yeah, he is. It's a shame that he hasn't had an opportunity in Formula One. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, what a what great career he has had. Uh, and I guess he's now really the highest rated IndyCar driver, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. He was down in New Zealand doing a charity event, which is very nice of him. Um, uh, uh, a month ago and I was there sorting out the final details on my book and I bumped him into him in the Air New Zealand lounge in Auckland and then talked to him again when we got to San Francisco <laughs> and he told me you can get a direct flight from San Francisco to Indy and that's saved me a lot of time on this trip. <laughs> <laughs> well brother we look forward to reading your book you're here at work now this what is this your full-time gig here? No, I only do it, but I've been involved with the company since it started, uh, with Richard's father, uh, Tony Fletcher, and um, now we've got 100% of the IndyCar. Every IndyCar has got one of our bladders on. Every cool. lights car has got one of our bladders on. 100% uh, of Aussie V8s, 100% of GP2, 100% Renault 3.5, 100% of Formula 4, and goodness knows what else. Awesome. I tell you what, if you were walking by this gray-haired guy on, on a supermarket, you go, oh, I wonder what that guy used to do. No one could guess what an exciting, great li life story this guy had. It's going to be out soon in his book. We'll give you a review on racer.com. 
We appreciate you watching. We appreciate the time, Haddon. Thanks a lot. Okay, thanks, Robin.